no such thing as can't. This is about building a better life, a better you. Alright guys, so welcome back to, well welcome to the first episode, now it's officially called Fit Rich or Fit and Rich. Uh, Rob's not going to be able to make it today, but we do have a really cool, very special guest today on with us. Um, he's a legend in uh, in Asian basketball. He's been named many, many times uh, as the best player in Asia. Uh, now he's got multiple businesses also. He's now settled more in Dubai. And uh, yeah, welcome to the show, Fadi. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, thank you. So... Uh, so yeah, t tell us a little bit about yourself. So it's you know it's been a long journey. Obviously, you're you're born, you're Lebanese, you're born in Lebanon. So uh, how was it growing up there? Were you playing basketball right away since you were a kid? Or well, I used to definitely. I'm uh, I'm into sports a lot. I used to play football and basketball, and soccer, and uh, at school. And that's uh, football was my main thing. Mm. But after you know when I started getting taller and taller i decided to shift to basketball and there um, where i started really at the age of 10 uh, 11 uh, going a little bit more to basketball at school mm -hmm. and um, you know uh, time by time um, i started joining teams with the young uh, uh, you know young teams and clubs yeah so uh, at the age of 15, it was my first game as a professional player, okay. and there started my journey. Okay, yeah. cool. But it was it was uh, it was nice. It was um, um, like not not a lot of uh, players they can you know at the age of 15 they can yeah. start professionally with a Division One team, and okay. a team that you know a, a champion team yeah yeah oh wow uh, and then at the age of 17 i was the starting five in in uh, in the championship team okay and uh, there i started my uh, you know my uh, my way and the age of 19 i was leading the league and scoring and mvp okay. so yeah i started really early and then definitely went to arab asia mm -hmm. world championship played overseas so it was it was uh i started early that's why people yeah, yeah. knows me more okay yeah. and and uh so how old were you when you decided okay i'll i'll, I'll make a move for basketball you were like around 10 uh 11 11 okay. yeah almost 11 okay 10, 11. and were you taking it seriously right away you said okay yeah. i want to become yeah? yeah yeah definitely i was i was really dedicated to the game that you know i want to develop yeah. And the nice thing that when I started, I didn't start that someone doesn't know. Yeah. It was something in me that, you know, this guy, yes, belongs to, the, to this game. Mm -hmm. and then directly I started developing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, without even, you know, getting to the bases of basketball. And, yeah. Yeah. So I had it. Okay. Um, and um, that's that's what made made me, you know, get quicker into basketball mm -hmm. at the age of uh, eleven. And uh, in four years, I was playing professionally. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That's, uh, How was it like growing up in Lebanon? Basketball is is it bigger, yeah. same as football? No, uh, no. basketball is number one uh, sports game in Lebanon. Okay. Uh, we've been uh, known as, uh, you know, the Asian champions four times, mm -hmm. and, you know, played the world champion for three times. So basketball is really big in Lebanon. Yeah. Uh, on, in 1998, when, you know, the country needed something, so we came, we won Asian championship in yeah. Lebanon. It was, it was a blast. So everyone went crazy. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, by making uh, the world championship three times, winning against France, Venezuela, Canada, Canada yeah. uh, all those, you know, uh, uh, teams that they compete, it's, it's something big and competing mm -hmm. against big uh, national teams, that's, that's something as well uh, yeah, big yeah. for a small country. So, yeah, we've, uh, the achievement we've done is, is really big as, as basketball. Yeah. So it's obviously like a big, uh, well, probably the biggest pride you can have the honor you know, of playing, representing your country Definitely. like this. And, and yeah. you've won obviously many awards, right? So you were named best, best player, player in Asia. You, you won many titles and stuff. Which one would you say was the most, uh, the biggest one for you? Uh, 
you know to be captain of uh, you know the captain of national team for mm -hmm. 18 years that's the that's the biggest achievement yeah you know holding and carrying the national team on on definitely my shoulders and the team the yeah. players shoulders was was something really um a pride for me mm -hmm. and um, uh, from there uh, if you want uh, everything happens after that is is, is nice yeah. but you know the the biggest achievement for me is to ha to hold the, to hold the national team on my shoulders yeah, yeah. for that long and to achieve not yeah, only yeah, just yeah. participate so the achievements we've we've done as national team is mm -hmm. big and uh, that's that's uh, that's where uh, i start from okay good yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know growing up in lebanon when you decided to become pro basketball player how was you know you're working hard you're disciplined were you doing extra workouts on the side also um i'm i'm known and and how dedicated i am to yeah. sports and to the game and um, uh, you know practicing is never stops with me yeah until now so um i w i used to work five six hours per day mm -hmm. i used to go in the morning in the evening in the noon i used to spend 10 hours at the gym when i was young just shooting you know, were you doing uh, weights so, also, or uh, it wasn't when I was too young, No, uh, 18 I started really going okay. hard on weights and uh, you know getting my my body bigger. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean uh, before that it was only basketball, and after that mm -hmm. it was weights and basketball yeah, yeah. Uh, combining. And um, that's where you know my body helped me in the game because mm -hmm. I'm. I'm known as well in my physical yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. game. So uh, that was that was the the turning point. Uh, mm -hmm. Practicing definitely with Michael Jordan, Tim Grover, and all those playing the World Championship, seeing the level of of uh, of the, of the yeah, players yeah. you play against. So you want to develop the yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So how that happened? Like you, you brought up Tim Grover, and Michael Jordan. So you you trained with them for a couple of months yeah, or something for two months. Uh, we were we were participating in uh, in the World Championship in Indianapolis in two thousand two. Okay. So we were preparing our the national team was you know in a in a camp. Yeah. The camp happened to be one of the camps happened to be in Chicago, and mm -hmm. we were looking for for a basketball court to train in. So uh, we found Michael Jordan's hub, uh, Tim Grover's hub. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Hoops. Okay. So we went there to do weights and to do our training, uh, yeah. basketball training. So there we met. I met Tim Grover and Michael Jordan. Tim Grover invited me over after the World Championship to stay mm -hmm. for two months. And there we met, and I started, you know, working daily with Jordan and uh, Tim Grover, and yeah. it was it was it was the best thing ever happened to me. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, me meeting the you know uh, the best basketball player ever yeah, yeah, yeah. to play the game is is uh, is a uh, is breathtaking. So yeah. um, uh, it was great. Stay two months playing pickup games with them, training in the morning, training in the noon apparently um, it was it was something big for me yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah you get to to be able to train with the best ever yeah. and and tim grover obviously is known you know with uh, what he's done with mj with with kobe with, with um Dwayne wade also like yeah. you know all the big names um so so at that time you're what you're 22 or something right so you're still a young player you just yeah. you said you started lifting when you were maybe 18 mm -hmm. so obviously that opens your eyes yeah the, what was different about like the way they were training because obviously on our podcast like my specialty is training younger athletes that want to become pro or just became pro uh, especially in the weight room like football players they don't know so much about how mm -hmm. to train you know i find basketball american football these sports they're a bit more advanced yeah so what was the like tim grover that was 20 more than 20 years ago yeah so what was special what hit you when you when you went and there the, the I'll, I'll tell you one thing and you'll know how special it is i couldn't stay 10 minutes and after those 10 minutes i threw up oh yeah yeah it was uh, a little test or it was it was it was uh really yeah because tim is more known for like he'll do weights and stuff not so much conditioning and he really, no? does he does conditioning. Who tell you like no, no. He does do conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, um, it's it's um, it's incredible how he trains his clients yeah. and his players. It's it's. He uh, doesn't mess around, huh? No, 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 no. 
And um, yes, you know, I always say 30% to 40% is talent and 60% is physical. Mm -hmm. So you get your shape ready, you get yeah. your body ready, you get your mind and everything ready and you're there. If yeah. you have the talent, you have to work on your body as yeah. well. Because this is, this is really important in, in an athlete life. Yeah. To take care of his body, take care of his fitness and conditioning and stay, you know, well built. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, his muscles need to be that strong yeah. to be able to hold injuries and, you know, yeah. to uh, to be able to uh, to compete mm -hmm. on the highest level. So 60% uh, to me is, is yeah, uh, physical yeah. and 40% is talent. But yeah, and I saw it with the NBA players and uh, with the... With the international players when we played in the world championship mm -hmm. so definitely you, i mean uh, the tim grover practices for two months i mean the first day i couldn't wake up in the morning i was sore from my foot to my head how long was a workout like so what was the first uh, about hours. plyometrics yeah. yeah yeah everything heavy weights yeah heavy heavy weights oh, heavy yeah. weights with a lot of conditioning with a lot of you know, we finish conditioning, we go to the basketball court, yeah. basketball court, we do conditioning to the basketball. Um, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a mix yeah, on yeah, a yeah. daily basis, non-stop. So um, the only day I had off is, is, a, is a one day. Yeah, and yeah. That's it, six days per week, working hard, working hard. Working and you need hard. that day, yeah? It was the, it was the turning point in my life mm -hmm. after 2002. Yeah, when I met the guys and I met Michael Jordan, Tim Grover, so how, how, how much Ma Michael Jordan is mentally tough. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tim Grover, the work ethics he gives to his players. You know, I um, the turning point happened to me, and then yeah, I I I really started uh, going internationally, not mm -hmm. only uh, in Lebanon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was going really hard against. Um, international players, big players, and yeah. uh, in competing badly, and uh, they had hard times, you know, uh, playing against me as well. Because mm -hmm. you know, it's all in your head. Yeah, yeah. And um, that was that was a really a turning point in my yeah. life. Yeah. Did you did you keep in touch after also a little bit? Did you see them again a little bit, for some training yeah, from time to time? But apparently yeah. after twenty years, it uh, yeah, yeah, of uh, course, yeah, went down and everyone got busy and. Uh, but did you ever get a chance to go back to the states and, and do more training camps with them? No, no, no. no. I was so busy with the national teams because national team. Mm -hmm. Then we start the season, go to the national team, start the season. So it was it was tough. I played in Europe, played in. Uh, in China, I played, uh, you know, um, um, overseas. So it was it was a hassle for me yeah, to go yeah. back there. Yeah. And what, so, what would be the biggest thing you say, like, because, I mean, Tim Grover, I've talked to him actually a few times on Instagram. I, I've read all his books and yeah. everything, and I told him personally, I said, I'm trying to do what you did, but I'm doing this in the Middle East right now. You know, yeah. and in terms of. You know, I've trained some of the biggest names in football and stuff. And he said, go even bigger than me. You can see just from his responses, yeah. the kind of coach he is. is like, okay, he's, uh, what next? Like, yeah. you know what he's saying. Like, okay, you won the championship the next day, you're back to work, you know? Yeah. And then he's, what? He's, he's those type of uh, coaches <coughs> that they are mean with you on the, in the gym and super nice with you after, yeah. after the gym. So he doesn't mess around yeah, 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 at yeah. all. And not, you know? not everybody can understand that. I think you have to be a yeah. high-level athlete to, have to, be, to appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. the mindset. Yeah, well, high-level athlete to a high-level person, Definitely. whether it's a business person exactly. or anything else. Yeah. So what would you be, the, the biggest thing that hit you? Was it the way he was training, the intensity, the, Michael Jordan. the mindset? <laughs> Same Michael Jordan. Yeah. But other than this, yeah, you know, um, combining all those stuff together. Yeah. You know, the mindset, the work ethic, uh, and the uh, time he spends with you, mm -hmm. all those combining together is that gives, you know, yeah, um, yeah, the Tim Anderson. Grover the edge on, on many other trainers. But uh, yes, he's, uh, he's something. Yeah, he's yeah, definitely yeah. something. At, at that point, basically, this was in which year you said? 2002. 2002. Okay, so he'd been training MJ for, for a while, was, even after baseball, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Baseball, came back, yeah. basketball, and all that. He's an uh, he's, uh, all time MJ trainer. Uh, trainer yeah yeah, yeah 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 i know the story also how he yeah he, yeah he he started training him and stuff um was mj because i know uh, obviously michael jordan probably one of the greatest athletes ever in all sports combined yeah. um 
what would you, like was he strong in the gym like was yeah beast because you obviously you look at a guy like lebron james he looks like he's a beast right mj it's obviously combination everything but he was strong also yeah he's, like heavy he's, bench press he's, yeah. he's super strong yeah super strong the way he works it's like he's he's doing this work for the last time in his life yeah yeah he destroy everything in the gym yeah he's a, he's a work <laughs> he's a machine yeah you know and i'm telling you the mental toughness this guy got no one in the world yeah, is yeah, closer yeah. to it's closer when you were training there was kobe there also no, in no, those no. years no 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 it was MJ, it was uh, Corey Maggetti, Antoine okay. Walker, Ray Allen, Michael Finley. Okay. All those, um, uh, Charles Oakley. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Juwan Howard, all those players that, you know. So still all top players, but yeah. MJ just stands out, huh? Yeah, MJ is totally different. Was there, was there any story like in those two months that happened and you're yeah, like, I was I was always picked in my, he was always picking me and, my, and his team. Yeah. That's the best thing happened. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to play against him. He, he, he really loved my game. He spoke about me in New York Times and he nice. said, you know, um, this guy belongs to the league and he would mm -hmm. be impressing many NBA players. And um, other than this, uh, man, he was um, no one can, no one can cl come close to him uh, by you know uh, trash talking him or doing something <laughs> yeah. bad and then and the pickup game. Yeah, because he will destroy you. Yeah, yeah right yeah. away. Even in a pickup game, and it's he will fun. Destroy, he destroyed one players. He 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 had a steal on Michael Jordan, so they were <laughs> they were joking around, and uh, the guy was said something. And it, he flipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> he destroyed him. So uh, yeah, I bet the guy, the guy is is in another world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Whatever people say about LeBron or whoever is trust mm -hmm. me, is way ahead of everyone. Yeah, 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 everyone. Next level, huh? Yeah. So it, it's true. Those memes, you know, like you saw the documentary on Netflix yeah. that came out last year, yeah. and there's all those memes of like you know. Um, the, the way the person looked at him and he's like and i took that personally yeah. right <laughs> so uh -huh. it's true right? it's it's uh <laughs> it's it's known that you cannot trash talk michael jordan yeah. in the game it's don't do that because he will get you um, um he will get 40 on you and yeah and a split of seconds so don't go close to michael jordan yeah, it's part of the game plan yeah, be smart he's, he's, he's super <laughs> tough super tough yeah. and he break he can break you yeah, right yeah. away so um yeah, that's Jordan. Jordan is something else, you know. Yeah. Put him on the side and then you talk about anyone you want. Compare anyone to anyone then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. I mean, everybody's got different styles, but I think like, yeah. this, it, yeah, it's exactly. a no-brainer, yeah. So now, now you've uh, you played for 25 years as a pro basketball player. Yeah. Um, at the same time, you opened different businesses. You started different businesses yeah. in Lebanon, right? So you had uh, gym. I do. I had real estate overseas okay. and I had uh, my restaurant in Lebanon. I had my uh, one of the biggest cleaning and disinfecting companies. I have my barber shop and I have the okay. biggest sport complex in the region. Champs, uh, yeah? Yeah, Champs. So uh, yes, we. I, I started business really early at the age of 25 okay. and with the, in the real estate. And then uh, after that, I started growing, you know, mm -hmm. ideas. Uh, but, you know, with the with what happened in Lebanon, yeah. uh, you know, everything uh, is on hold now. Um, is that when you decided to come to yeah. Dubai and open Champs? Yeah, I was yeah. already no, like... No, uh, before that, I was. I decided to start with the academies okay. and the schools. Mm -hmm. and it happened that I opened uh, in six locations, uh, football and basketball. And then, um, you know, in the Corona, when I saw everything is uh, everything stopped, yeah. because, you know, there's rules that, the schools need to stop as well. We cannot use the courts. Oh, yeah. So I decided to have my own hub. Okay. And there we started. I started Champs and, you know. Uh, the one in Lebanon or here? Here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it took me like two and a half months. Just That's pretty quick, it. yeah. Yeah. And uh, now I'm definitely growing the place to, to, a, to a bigger place because mm -hmm. I saw the demand is really big on it. And sports yeah, yeah. is something. And when you do something really... Um, um, how you can say it, really special. Yeah. 
people by time will, yeah, will exactly. adapt to it. Yeah. So that's it's a one stop shop. Yeah. That, you know, everyone, families, kids, parents, you know, they can come, put their kids, train, work out. And uh, it's a nice atmosphere. Now the gym is going to be mm-hmm. around 700 square meters, around 7,000 probably square foot. So is that what, twice as big as what it is now? Three times. Three times, okay. Yeah. So until the end of the basketball court. Exactly. Okay. And then with it, another the same size of the gym, MMA and boxing club. Yeah. Huge one. And uh, two basketball courts, one, one, one uh, I'm doing a rehabilitation center. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, just, you know, for for individual yeah yeah like you can go in do norma tech do yeah, ice yeah. bath nice have uh, you know this uh, gym that was um, closer like up north i forget next to the um, next to the port what's it called marina 72 or something do you yeah. know this gym uh, maybe you know uh, it was that was all it was called a uh, mj uh, michael johnson performance center so they have one in dallas uh, you know michael johnson yeah the 400 meter run yeah, yeah. yeah so he had one in dallas it's the best one of the best in the world in terms of getting athletes quicker okay. because obviously that's what they specialize yeah, in yeah. everything for rugby american football whatever and uh, then they started the second one here but they didn't i think it's port rashid or something okay. and uh, man massive a bit like i think what champs is going to be in terms of you know huge warehouse it had a proper track four lanes going i think 50 or 60 meters so you can do proper sprint training everything okay. amazing but the location was super far and uh, yes, yeah, so I think that was the biggest problem. But the the idea was amazing yeah. for uh, athletes. Like exactly. it was something like the athletes would come from abroad, you know, to train. We had we had uh, we had the best sprinters in the in France now for two weeks. I don't know if you met them. They were working really. Two guys, yeah. Uh, no, they were like around seven guys. Okay. They came from France. They were champions. Okay. Uh, they were they were champs. They came for two weeks. So yeah. yes, you know we we're, we're we're starting to yeah, get yeah. there. It's it's been three months, you know, and thank God with this three month, you know, everything is is falling in the in the right place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely when when I you know you know expand it and get it where I want it to be, you yeah. know, definitely the footfall is gonna be way more. Yeah, although yeah, yeah. we're 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 doing great now uh and you know with what i'm adding on the classes the 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 rehab room mm-hmm. and uh, i'm doing um, a room for for gymnastics for kids mm-hmm. between two years and five years okay uh something fun you know yeah yeah um, and then you know the courts and uh, the academies as well so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a it's a one-stop shop yeah 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 hopefully you know hopefully corona is gonna ease things up on us because yeah. uh, we need uh, we need to go back to our normal life yeah. and um uh, you know start our uh, building up on on sports and what we know mm-hmm. uh, best to do and uh, you know help people to really develop in yeah. every aspect uh, in terms of conditioning fitness exactly body yeah. we're building uh, uh, classes basketball football mm-hmm. so that's that's my aim and that's my goal and uh, you know uh, people are loving it yeah, so yeah, yeah that's that's the best thing you can get for now yeah. yeah i think it's a it's the right time you know like when i moved here eight years ago mm-hmm. from canada actually was two strength conditioning coaches one of them yeah. he was playing actually he used to play division one uh, in the uh, u mass you know mm-hmm. basketball mm-hmm. and uh, so we moved here to open the first gym for athletes a bit like this but i don't think dubai was so ready for this and now i think i from from what i see you know like they're starting to understand you know like Athletes need the proper strength conditioning. Oh, ice bath recovery is important. This and that, and, yeah. and I think the location and the fact that you've been there and you know what it takes, you know, from all those years of exactly. playing and training at the highest level. This is sometimes Nick is uh, is about what you know yeah. and uh, you implement. So it doesn't. I'm not just a businessman that you know. Okay, I got um, uh, money. I want to spend it in uh, in a way that mm-hmm. yes. Let's go do a gym, and I don't know anything. Yeah, about yeah. It. There's a lot of. Oh yes, Dubai. okay. I wanna do. Uh, uh, I don't know. X uh, uh, open uh, open a uh, pet shop. 
Yeah. And I have nothing to do with <laughs> that. that so but somebody told you there's money to be made in there, so yeah, you went so, for it. Yeah. So I know what it takes. I know how to, to grow it. Mm -hmm. I know what to implement and how to take things forward. The machines I'm ordering now for the new thing is, is, is for everyone, and athletes going to be loving it. Uh, mixing up with the Kaiser's machine, mixing up with the nice. plate loaded. We have our definitely the machines we have. Uh, building the CrossFit area, yeah, you know, yeah. all the calisthenics and stuff, you yeah. know, something. And I know very well that every machine I'm ordering, it's really, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it caters, you know, a special need for, for, uh, for athletes and yeah. normal people. Yeah. So that's my aim, you know, to have this hub um, as a, a development center. Yeah, yeah. And uh, everyone who wants to develop, really develop. Mm -hmm to to come even if he's if he got his own trainer he can plug in my my only concern is there is a lot of non-certified mm -hmm. trainers yeah, yeah. in the market like i've seen man i've seen <laughs> trainers yeah. that they don't know what they are doing yeah i they have no clue what they're doing in in, in the practices yeah and this is what really um, yeah, you need to have uh, some a kind proper of strategy for all this. And um, I really think this needs to be monitored and supervised yeah. on because, you know, you can be, you can be, I mean, deadly hurt. Yeah, of course. Injured yeah. with one move you're doing. And yeah. I've seen man trainers doing lunges with, uh, with high overhead. axe, uh, overhead like. high axe and weights for, for a lady that she's, <laughs> she barely can do squats. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I know v for a fact this can destroy her. Yeah. So, um, and I've seen, you know, uh, overweighted people uh, with a trainer, training mm -hmm. them with a totally different type for, for uh, yeah. losing weight. So uh, stuff like this, it really press on my nerves. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, when you know... Um, a lot in this business, yeah, you start, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, being jealous about this business, yeah. about sports. So um, we had a good talk about uh, that. Before, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why uh, you know we 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 try to have as much as we can, good people, good mm -hmm. trainers, uh, uh, you know, uh, that they understand what they're doing, and yeah. you know, uh, I think. Uh, you're one of those guys, rare guys mm -hmm. that they know what they're doing in this uh, in this business, and um, you know we're happy that we we have yeah. uh, you know this kind of trainers around us. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, uh, that's the best thing. Yeah, it'll be important, I think, because obviously the facility is going to be amazing, Thank probably you. the best ones in Dubai, right? Yeah, Once all this okay. is done, also, and uh, the environment, everything is amazing. The academy, obviously, yeah. is. Probably, I'm not an expert for basketball academies, but I think in Dubai, I know the quality I, was not so much there before, but now yours is taking it uh, up a notch, commercial, right? Commercial, a lot of commercials. Yeah, so, so that's going to be good, but then, yeah, you have to make sure, obviously, because at the end of the day, Dubai is not big, right? Then it's word of mouth, yeah, the reputation, yeah. so making sure that the, the team exactly. of trainers is the best. Um, I'll help you out with that if yeah. you want. I know a Thank few people you. because I, I, the the gym that we had for athletes, we used to have the best team of coaches, yeah. but it wasn't run properly. So in the end, everybody kind of went out their own yeah. way. So they're yeah. a bit all over Dubai now. Yeah. But um, yeah, that should be that should be exciting for any athlete in Dubai. I think yeah, will have to come. Yeah, the nice thing is that you can jump in, work out. Exactly. While you were working out, you can see everyone practicing around yeah. you, playing basketball, playing football. If the courts are free, the trainer is you exactly. know is free to take his client and yeah. work out work I out love that. in the yeah. in the in the football or basketball court. Yeah. You know, the the atmosphere is nice. Yeah, yeah. It's very different from it's, yeah. A lot of the gyms in Dubai, it's all about aesthetics and yeah, exactly. this and that and machines go lift weights and yeah. you know. But for for me building a community is is uh, is the key. Yeah. You know, a healthy community that, you know, I want everyone who steps in champs mm -hmm. to work out. Yeah. So even the moms and the dads that they're watching their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want for one mm -hmm. uh time and I will reach this to have them jump Dude. in the gym, yeah. work out while their kids are watching yeah, and yeah, playing yeah, basketball yeah. and football. That's the now best. 
they're you know they're there yeah. you know they're you know we will have something tempting for them yeah classes uh, boot camps mm-hmm. stuff like this but this is my aim you know everyone working into champs i don't want to see them sitting around. yeah 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 just go work out finish pick your kid pick your uh, bag uh, shower uh, you're an athlete yeah watch kids you know work out have fun yeah it's an atmosphere that you know you want to build yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what i'm trying to build and um, hopefully hopefully we'll reach yeah 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 inshallah yeah. this is i think this is uh, i was going to ask you what your next goals were in terms of you know i think you you've achieved a lot in your life it's now it's what is it? it's more about giving back about yeah. impacting the the world in a positive way right exactly and th- this is like one of the ways i think definitely like you said obviously the kids will be more active but then even the parents and at the end of the day the whole family is more active yeah. everybody goes home more healthy everybody's happier you know and that just like impacts a lot more people around them exactly. they'll bring more people everybody yeah Indeed. so uh, yeah so so um, um uh, the idea is is definitely you know dubai is as you said is not that big the mm-hmm. word of mouth is really quick so what what you do people can know about it really quickly yeah and uh, yes there is a lot who doesn't know about champs but soon mm-hmm. when when you are doing the right thing you expand you exactly. do the stuff in the right way people by time they will know that you mm-hmm. know yes we are not going to have fun we're going to work out yeah. you know this is what i want yeah yeah and um, I'm, because for me workout is not having fun workout is pain you know you need to be in this yeah um, i mean yes you go mingle talk, yeah, yeah yeah you know have uh, um, you know a little bit of chat from here to there but you need to go really uh, f- feel every single muscle in your body working out yeah and if you don't do that don't go to the gym yeah uh, if you want to go to the gym with the full makeup just to take selfies or to yeah. take pictures on the mirror don't go there yeah i mean you want to go you want to really work out you want to really mm-hmm. you know achieve develop yeah. yourself you have to be in pain yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. be in this in the nice pain we're not yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, that yeah. so this is this is what this is what uh, you know working out is to me mm-hmm. i when i jump in the gym and i want to work out in, in anything yeah or any kind of muscle i want to make sure that really i'm suffering yeah uh in this session i'm really suffering yeah if i'm not doing this definitely i will not develop yeah so don't go to the gym just to you know go to the treadmill walk for 45 minutes and yeah then go outside your, to do yeah, that you did your thing and yeah. you don't know instead of working out on the treadmill yeah uh, there is there is a he, multi uh, movements that you can do with the functional training yeah. that can get you way better than wor- just yeah. you know standing on the treadmill yes okay you can use the treadmill at the end of your practice for for uh, 30 minutes cardio yeah okay that's fine but don't take you know and this is um, very important that you want to put in your head that you you want to develop your body you mm-hmm. want to develop yourself yeah don't say that okay i'm i'm perfect i need that's it yeah that's yeah. my uh no you can never be perfect anyways you you always still, something that you can improve you can still improve you yeah. can still develop yourself there's many things you can do in in yourself Mm-hmm. to develop yeah, yeah so uh working out is to me is, is something it's a red line yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i think that's one of the biggest things you know in terms of the mindset in terms of how high level athletes like yourself you you learn you've learned this from you know all those years of training hard like you said nobody enjoys training that hard and mm-hmm. being out of your comfort zone and stuff yeah. but you know you do it for the long run for the right reasons and all this and then you can carry that over also to i always say like yeah to everything else in your life so like you you learn valuable lessons i think competitive sports every kid should do it because it teaches you so much about life like you're not gonna get to where you want by just sitting on your butt and and hoping for it you have to put in the work Uh, you have to get up at 5 a.m three workouts a day like you're doing 10 hours a day You know, and eventually it'll pay off, but there's going to be ups and downs and injuries. Every day. So it's, it's, um, I always say that I I just posted yesterday something about my son. You do things in the right way, 
you will get the right results. Mm -hmm. So, um, and success will never come a gift mm -hmm. to you while you're sitting home, yeah. ever. Yeah. So if you're not, you know, in any, I'm not talking about only sports. I'm yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. everything in life. Yeah. Even your the family yeah. success you achieve will never come by just, you know, okay, getting married, having kids, and that's it. No. Mm. If you don't work your ass off every day for everything you're doing in your life, 24-7, mm -hmm. giving three main things to this is discipline, commitment, and dedication. Those three if you if you implement them in anything you're doing in your life, then you'll have the chance to succeed. Yeah. Other than this, without working hard, without being dedicated, committed, and disciplined yeah. to what you're doing, you will never ever reach anything yeah. ever. So uh, uh, people come tell me like you know we we lost faith, or we don't have hope, mm -hmm. or. Man, this is crap. This is really um, um, something I don't want to hear and I don't want yeah, to yeah. because when you're down, you have to find uh, the right um, motivation in yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for people to come and motivate you. No one's going to do it for no, you. No, no. Even if they're going to do it to you, yeah. you're not going to be motivated as much as you motivate yourself yeah. and you put in your mind that I want to stand back mm -hmm. and I want to really work hard for, for me to succeed. Yeah. And I cannot succeed. Like I tell people like, okay, when when you go hike, you'll, you'll say, okay, I want to hike to this mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay, they they come back and next time the same thing. No, find the bigger <laughs> mountain to hike. Yeah, uh, don't don't th and that's that's something really important. When you achieve your goal, find bigger goals yeah. and then keep on going, keep on going to achieve them. Yeah, even if you couldn't achieve, but you're working hard. Yeah, to achieve. So, achievements and success will never come as a gift from God. Mm -hmm. They come because you work hard every day. You go to your office. You give your 100% in yeah. sales. You give 100% in your marketing. You give 100% in your business, in sports, in your gym, in your family, in everything you're doing in your life to succeed. Yeah. And when you succeed, you'll be like, yeah. You'll like appreciate now, it more. I can tell people yeah. uh, about this now because I didn't, I'm not just sitting and throwing words and yeah. I've never felt it. Yeah. No. You, and I felt it because I used to wake up 4 a.m. Four every day. Mm -hmm. And I kept on on almost 20 years in my career, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, being in the gym at six, uh, 5.45, yeah. working out, going to my work, finish, go back again, work mm -hmm. out for two hours, and go back home, eat, sleep. Next day the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we had, I had no lifestyle as, as, Clubs, traveling, you know, enjoying yeah. zero. Yeah. So it was all about dedication, commitment, and discipline to what I want to do and achieve. Yeah. After I achieve, you know, I can I can give whatever I had in my life for mm -hmm. for the youngsters, for, yeah. for those generation for this generation that they are in need, I think, for for someone uh, me, you, everyone spread the word about sports and fitness, how important it yeah. is and the healthy life that they need to to uh, to follow mm -hmm. because it's very important and that's the turning point in every single yeah. uh, person to to really have this healthy life when he tried it, mm -hmm. tries it, he will feel that it's it's totally different. Yeah, it changes their lives, every every aspect completely. of their lives. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, I think this is a really good message for a lot of people because Nowadays, especially with social media and stuff, people just see the end result and they yeah. say, I want this and they expect it to be so easy. But like, you, you know, you, like you just said, your schedule and stuff, same for Michael Jordan, same for everybody that everybody like watches, you know, they look up to. <laughs> There's so much stuff behind the scene that happens and and a lot of stuff very often you go into a, a dark place also because it's not happening the way you're supposed to, you're expecting it to yeah. you know i think that's i think that's part of the journey also that's you know yes you're looking up you you want to get that success this is like definition of success you know but 
it's also enjoying appreciating the journey because Definitely. or else uh, yeah. you're never going to be happy you can't just say oh, i'm going to be happy when i make it to the nba yeah. and then <laughs> yeah. what if you don't make it you know you fall you fall down 100 times you and yeah. you stand up one time and then you fall 100 times and you, fall, you stand up one time yeah. um, i said it uh, before failure yeah is the only is the only way to success mm -hmm. you don't know how to fail you will never ever know how to succeed yeah so you have to fail in your life plenty of times exactly yeah to learn from those failures mm -hmm. and then you move on yeah it's all about how you look at it right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so what what would be like you know if if you could go back in time or tell young athletes nowadays like what would be like let's say three tips that you would give yourself or to get them uh, listen i i said it those work might, yeah uh dedication commitment mm -hmm. and discipline those are the three m most important things because f from each one you'll take thousands yeah, of, yeah. Uh, of uh of things out of it to spread it True. but commitment be committed to what you're doing be disciplined to what you're doing and be dedicated to what you're mm -hmm. doing and those three will give you the hard work will give you the success will give you f the failure they will give you um everything every you know th that's the that's the goal yeah uh and that's the way to success yeah um and to success i'm not saying success can be you know being the the best person in the world no to succeed in what you want okay mm -hmm. i have a goal i want to achieve this goal when i want to achieve it i have to do those three yeah after those three you achieved your goal none you know find mm -hmm. a better goal a bigger goal but you know um, um you have to start from somewhere yeah as as um, as students in school yeah if you wanna if you have if you have an exam you cannot go to the exam without being committed dedicated and uh, disciplined yeah to to uh to studying at home yeah you have to study be committed disciplined yeah dedicated and then go do the exam now you're this is all hard work. This is your studying. Mm -hmm. This is you're doing your job, and then you cannot go do your exam, take a hundred, hundred, and uh, yeah. you know. And now, yes, I did succeed. And so yeah, everything yeah. in life starts from there, and from there you can you know start building on things. Yeah, so yeah. So that's yeah. my main three uh, messages. Yeah, I think there's not like everything falls into place. Yeah, when once yeah. you if you're willing to put in the work, you, you'll find a way. Whether it's exactly. waking up earlier. Yeah focusing more on certain things and stuff and uh yeah um so now are you do you have any plans of going back to lebanon also no. or um no? I'm, my, my work's still there we're managing you know as much as we can um the crisis is big yeah politically is uh, is damaged financially is damaged yeah so um now i'm looking more to expand in the gcc and uh, emirates mm -hmm. so uh, hopefully step by step um, we'll reach somewhere uh, but uh, but um, you know the the perfect uh, scenario was was to come to dubai because dubai i've been coming to dubai for the past 20 years probably okay. 22 years and um, uh, we we know that you know you feel the community and the communities in dubai yeah uh, that's that's the the, you know the best thing happened in, in uh, UAE mm -hmm. and um, hopefully uh, you know we build on that and um, we achieve what we want to achieve as um, as you know um, the main thing is to to give this mindset to to everyone who mm -hmm. wants to really work hard and, and uh, to work in sports uh, industry and um, for the time being lebanon uh, you know will be yeah will be managing our our work there until you know things get better yeah, yeah. okay great so now the the plan for next uh, abu dhabi uh, champs uh, gcc you know Saudi, okay. uh, yeah. to to expand the champs yes, over yes. there yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah nice that's uh, step by step so hopefully soon in abu dhabi and uh, after expanding probably six months from the expansion yeah and then we'll move to saudi after that as well you're gonna yeah. start bring some basketball tournaments here also yes 
Uh, but hopefully COVID will uh, ease things. I'm bringing man NBA players over. I'm bringing yeah. um, uh, best really football cool. players, uh, you know, over. I'm bringing best athletes over. Uh, I'm bringing really b b high caliber of bodybuilders, trainers, uh, stuff over to the gym. Uh, yeah, yeah to okay. champs. Yeah. So, um, so, but you know that Corona is killing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not and easy. Can, yeah, plus, add on that you. You know there is, there is restrictions. Yeah. You know we want to obey and follow the rules, and we don't want to break it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the only thing it's holding us from uh, yeah. from uh, you know doing that. So hopefully by hopefully Inshallah, by yeah. soon. Nice, well, nice. You'll bring uh, MJ, Tim Grover over. I hope so. No, Have they I been here before? So. Huh? Have they been here before? Yeah, yeah. MJ really? came. Yeah, yeah. A few came. years ago. Yeah. Okay. Kobe Bryant came, I think. Ray yeah. Allen came last year. Oh, yeah, 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 for the um, nice Soul DXB. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a totally uh, different world in Dubai. People will, you know, the, the good thing is you can invite people over and you can yeah. bring people over because they love Dubai. Yeah, exactly. And Dubai yeah. Is, is an amazing place to be at. And yeah. You know, the, you know um, actually the people... Uh, who's responsible of Dubai and the politicians and everyone is, is mm -hmm. doing a great, great, great job in building this community. Yeah. And um, yeah, but hopefully soon we'll, uh, e things will ease up and we'll start bringing those those big names. Nice, man, nice. Yeah. So where can people uh, follow you on social media, mostly on Instagram? Yeah, or? Instagram, Facebook. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm always on... Uh, on those mm -hmm. active now on Instagram because I'm building a lot of things related to to the healthy life and to the lifestyle and you know spreading the messages between an athlete between an, um, a family man between mm -hmm. the business you know all those stuff uh, stuff that I'm doing and um, yeah trying to motivate people as much as uh, as I can Good and uh, you know we definitely few things are popping up uh, soon about you know. Uh, the healthy part mm -hmm. uh, will definitely launch it. Hopefully, we're working on it. But uh, yes, social media is uh, Instagram mostly. Perfect. Yeah, active on it. Awesome, man. Well, good luck with uh, all the projects. Thank you, Nick. Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be following closely. Uh, yeah, we'll know. be there more and more. It'll be exciting, I'm sure, for a lot of people in Dubai. So, Thank and international, you. yeah. So, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, hope uh, you you had some. Uh, some good tips and everything from uh, from the podcast and uh, we'll see you soon you can subscribe to the show on apple podcasts spotify or stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts if you like what you hear why not leave rob and nick a five-star review to find out more you can connect with rob on instagram at rob j sharp and follow nick at coach nick n-i-c underscore